Today, we're going to be diving into how you can manipulate geometry using the Blender Python API. We'll learn the secret sauce that lets you knead your Blender meshes like dough in the hands of a master baker. Hey, I'm Victor Stepanoff, and I'll be guiding you through this Blender Python tutorial. We'll be going over the BMesh Python module that gives us the ability to work with geometry through the Python API. With BMesh, Blender developers gave us access to the same functionality that's behind Blender's mesh editing tools that we've grown to love. I'll help you build a mental model of how all this works so you can start working with this today. This won't come as a surprise to you, but the BMesh Python module supports working with vertices, faces, and edges. BMesh also supports loops, but I would like to cover that in a separate video. Before we start, it's important to understand that the BMesh data is not exactly the mesh data of a geometry object. What does that even mean? If we take a look at the outliner, you can usually see the list of objects that are currently in the scene. If you expand one of them, you can see data that's associated with this object. For example, if you expand a mesh object, you'll see mesh data that's associated with that object. Now, when it comes to working with BMesh, we'll be creating it out of the mesh data. We'll be working with it, manipulating the data, and then putting it back in so we can update the mesh. This all will make sense as we go through this video. Okay, that's enough theory for now. Let's hop into Blender and see how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and open the scripting workspace. That's where we're gonna be working with our script. Hit new right here. And now we're ready to write some scripts. Let's go ahead and import BPY. And BMesh is actually a separate module, so we need to import that as well. Now today, I'm not gonna be writing any code that will automatically clean the scene for us and add a cube back into the scene. I'll be working with the default cube as is. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select the light and delete that, select the camera and then delete that. So we just have our cube right here in the scene. I've made sure to select it so it's going to be our act object. We're going to be using that right now. So let's go ahead and get a reference to this active object like that. So I'm accessing the context and getting the active object. Let me add a comma here. Okay, now let's create a BMesh object. Let's create a variable that's going to be holding the reference to our BMesh like that. So we're just calling new on the BMesh. And this should create a new BMesh object for us. Let me add a comment as well. And now that we have a reference to our active object and we've created a BMesh object, we need to initialize it from the mesh data of our active mesh object. So I'm using the from mesh and then passing in our data of our mesh object. So exactly it's the cubes data right here. So we're passing this in into the BMesh and it's getting initialized. It's, it's reading it in and creating a representation that we can start using. Let's go ahead and also add a comment here and run the script. Okay, now our script is set up. The basics of that is there. Let's go ahead and hit the run button and you can see that nothing has happened. And uh, in, in reality, we're just getting a reference, creating a new BMesh object and then initializing and doing nothing with that, right? So really nothing is gonna change in the scene. Now, one thing that we usually wanna do with the BMesh after we're done working with it is called the free method. So let me go ahead and do that here. This line right here tells Blender that we don't need this BMesh object anymore and Blender could free the memory that was allocated for this object. Now, at the end of the script, this will actually happen on its own automatically. And usually with Python scripts, this low level type of memory management isn't really expected. But since the Blender developers are advising us to do it, I would also recommend doing it since the Blender developers themselves said that this is a good idea to do. And let me go ahead and comment this as well. Okay, let's go ahead and run our script again. And you can see again, nothing really happened. So we're just getting the BMesh initialized and then we're cleaning up and that's it. All right, and before you get too bored with this, let's go ahead and do something. Let's bevel the vert using the bevel function. I'm gonna go ahead and place this operation right between our initialization and when we free our BMesh. And I'm using BMesh ops and then bevel. 
I'm passing in the mesh object we're working with and I'm setting the uh, geometry. So geom is representing the geometry that this particular beveler is gonna be working on. I'm gonna be passing in the list of verts. So this is a sequence of verts that contains all the verts in our active objects, in particular our cube right now. And I'm setting the offset to 0.5 and let's go ahead and run the script. And yet again, nothing is happening. We're running the script and it seems to be doing something. It's beveling, but nothing is happening to our cube. Remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we actually have to put back that B mesh. So we need to apply that B mesh to the mesh data to actually make our mesh object update. Let's go ahead and do that now. And now I'm using the to mesh function right here and I'm passing in the mesh data. So I wanna apply the B mesh modifications that we did to our mesh. So we're putting it back into the mesh data and then calling free. All right, let's see what happens when I run the script. And it looks like actually nothing happened but it did we go ahead and click or just hover over the 3d viewport you can see right away i'm gonna hit control space to get a closer view and you can see that the bevel was applied it, it looked like it didn't do it right away and we can fix that let's go ahead and add a line to fix that i'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit undo that so Make sure to undo that because I'm going to be just working with the same mesh and just undoing each operation so we don't have to add it back. So and after we apply this B mesh to our mesh data, I'm going to go ahead and call on the mesh object. So the data and I'm going to go ahead and call update. This will allow us to right away see the results of this operation. Let's go ahead and run the script again and you can see right away as soon as I ran that, this updated our mesh. All right. And if you're enjoying this tutorial and learning something new, make sure to hit the like button. I will greatly appreciate it. Okay, let me go ahead and undo that. And right after we do the bevel, I wanna do one more thing and that is update the normals. It's always a good idea to update them right after you do any operation that modifies the mesh. So let's go ahead and update that. And we'll do that by simply calling normal update. And at this point, the normal should be updated. And let's go ahead and maybe update uh, the script. And let's go ahead and update the offset to something like eight. Let's go ahead and run that. And you can see that uh, the script still runs and that looks great, all right. Okay, let me go ahead and show you how you can bevel the edges using the same function, but just modifying slightly. Go ahead and then do those changes and let me update this call. Okay, I've updated the call to the bevel function and uh, instead of passing in the verts, I'm passing in the sequence of edges, right? This is a list of all the edges in our active object. And I updated the offset. I used the segments, so how many segments that bevel is gonna have. The effect of that bevel, I want it to be on the edges. And then I'll, I set the profile. Let's go ahead and run the script. And let's go ahead and take a closer look. And you can see that the bevel was applied indeed to the edges. So that is basically how you do that. Of course, you can do a lot more stuff with eMesh. There's a whole list of operations that you can do here. But I wanna underline one thing. If your object is in edit mode, you'll need to slightly tweak this code to make it work. And this is useful when you're writing your script. You don't really know in which mode your object might be in, right? Or you're, when you're writing your add-on. So it's useful to know how the exact same code will be functioning in object mode and in edit mode. Let me go ahead and undo that operation and let's update the code so it will work in edit mode as well. And to do this, I'll need to replace these two lines right here instead of creating a mesh object and initializing it right here. I'm just gonna do it in a one single line. So let me remove that. And here's the line. We're using mesh, and then from edit mesh, 
and then again we're passing in that mesh data so this is going to be the mesh data that is in edit mode and we're getting that b mesh object right here okay so that's that and the end as well so we're going to be replacing these two lines right here and the good thing is that we we don't need this last call to update the mesh and see the results on screen and those two lines were replaced with just one so that call is going to be update edit mesh and again we're passing in the reference to the edit mode mesh data that should update this correctly now before we run the script make sure that you are in edit mode so you gotta hit tab and you'll see that uh, you're in edit mode right here and now the script is going to be working so you can also go ahead and try to run this code without going into edit mode and you'll see an error pop up so make sure you are in edit mode before you run this so let's run that and you can see we are in edit mode and the bevel was applied and now you can see that there's a number of things that need to happen before and after you're done editing the mesh and also it depends on if you're in edit mode or in object mode. This seems like a pretty big headache that you have to deal with each time you're working with bmesh, but it doesn't have to be that way. And if you want to find out how you can make your life easier when working with bmesh, make sure to check out this video next. Thanks for watching.